Technology, aroma therapy. Aroma as in pong therapy. Yes. Morning, Janice. Morning. Janice Bennon is with us. Um, I've heard of reflexology. In fact, I understand it to be not too far removed from acupuncture, but there is a difference. Yes. Reflexology is basically acupressure of the feet and hands. And acupressure is exactly the same as acupuncture, whereas acupuncture uses needles, acupressure uses pressure of the fingers and the thumbs on the body. How far removed from that is physiotherapy? Physiotherapy is working on the muscles and the bones and uh, manipulating, really, whereas reflexology is not manipulating at all. Neither is acupressure. You're working on the nerve endings, and through working on these nerve endings, you're working on all organs of the body. So, if somebody came to you with a, a gammy knee, yes, what would you? I mean, would you first of all offer treatment? Well, first of all, I would probably have a look at it um, as a physiotherapist would, and find out the condition of it. Um, if there is something very major, uh, major wrong, um, too much inflammation, it's obviously not good to touch the area, touch the knee at all, because you could make the condition a lot worse. But what you can do is, um, through working through the feet, you can work on the area through, um, through the nervous system and you cause an increase in the circulation around the area. So you increase the healing around the knee. But obviously it depends on how bad mm. it is and sure. so on. Is there any medical proof that the areas that you perhaps go for on the ball of the foot, that between the toes or whatever, for, say, the knee, that, is there any medical proof that the wires in the nervous system actually link those two? Well, basically, um, I think there is medical proof that the, the nervous system um, goes straight through the body like that, and you do get areas which are connected through the nerves. Um, but they haven't, as yet, done... Well, I think they're doing tests at the moment, which will prove, once and for all, the theory. Mm -hmm. but, but it doesn't really matter if, if it works. But it works 98% um, of the time. Um, you get a response in the area concerned, and it's a definite response. Say if I'm working on, I've got a lady with arthritis of the knees, now every time I see her, um, straight after the reflexology, well within doing the treatment and working on her knees through the feet, not touching the knees at all, her knees go bright red. Because and of the increase in blood flow? In, an increase in blood flow, and also there's an, increase, um, there's an increase in pain usually when I'm working on that area, on that mm -hmm. specific mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. and it lasts for about a day or two afterwards. It's mm. a definite response to the treatment. Well, where, did, where did reflexology come from? Is it, is it the, the twin sister of uh, acupuncture? Yes, it's, a, it's actually older than acupuncture. It's the forerunner of acupuncture. It's just that um, whereas with reflexology and acupressure, you can um, work only with your set of hands. With acupuncture, you can put needles all over the place and do mm. a lot of areas in one go. Do you still receive uh, the, the quizzical look from, from, well, not cynical folk, but, but people with a, like to take things perhaps with a pinch of salt? Yes, it's not so bad now though. A lot of people have heard of it and a lot of people know of other people who have heard of a treatment being mm. done. So it's not quite so bad as it was three years ago. I mean, three years ago it was, um, everyone looked at you gone out. But now people are actually coming up and saying, oh, yes, I know somebody who um, did something like, you know, has had something done like that. And um, aromatherapy, which is the other one, is uh, basically I use, do acupressure all over the body then, rather than just on the feet. Oh, it's nothing to do with aroma smells? And, no, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and in you doing that, I use uh, essential oils, which are oils taken from herbs, woods, um, uh, crystals, and, and um, so forth. Um, such as benzoin, frankincense, lavender, and got so The good on. old biblical stuff. Yes, well, the good, yes. And all, all the herbs. And I would use that, I would do reflexology first to find out what areas need working on. And then I would use the oils then to do the treatment. So if somebody's got a congested liver, I would use, say, rosemary in the what massage What is the medical oil. condition of a congested liver, for goodness sakes? Oh, well, you can have hepatitis. Um, uh, people with migraine, uh, migraine sufferers tend to have congested livers. If, now is that, is that, if a doctor is listening to this now in his car, driving to his first patient, is he going to be smiling at that and saying what a loony that woman is or not? Not is really. That, that is, he's going to agree with that, yes. Okay. Yes, because um, if the liver isn't working correctly, there are numerous 
uh, things that go, uh, go wrong. I mean, um, such as I get congested, uh, if I pick up congested sinuses. That Which I've mean, got at the moment, right? Yeah. Well, you can work on those areas. I can't, through finding out the problem in the feet though, I cannot work out from there what is wrong. I mean, I might not know it's hepatitis or um, any other problem with the liver or any problem with the sinuses. I might, um, I'll only know there's a problem in that area and I'll know approximately how bad it is. So that's very good diagnosis for um, for any heart complaints. Because mm, if somebody comes to me with a pain across the chest and, don't, and frightened to go to the doctor, um, basically I can sort of use technique to get him to go to the doctor if I find it bad enough. Right, so, to do so, so. Re aromatherapy is reflexology in places other than the hands of the feet. And while you're. No, reflex. Excuse me. Reflexology is just diagnosis and treatment on the feet and hands. Aromatherapy is treatment on the whole body through the use of essential oils. Essential oils? Yes. Sounds like a cliche that, if you don't mind me saying. And well, I don't see why you say essential. Well, <laughs> it, it, they're, they're oils, but they're not oily. They're basically. Oh, it's a, it's a technical term for the kinds of oil, I yes. see. Like clarified butter and whatever. Yes, yes. They're, um, they're oils taken from the herbs, purified oils. Mm. Well, pure oils taken from the herbs. And do the oils. They S penetrate through the they skin. They go through the skin, yes. yes, as well as smelling nice in person. Yes. yes, they're not just, it's not just a nice treatment. It is, it has quite a profound effect and it lasts quite a while as well, the effect. But it goes straight through, um, it goes straight through the skin and it's been proved that it can go straight, the molecules are small enough to go straight through to the organs concerned. And that's what they use, they use aromatherapy for poultices again. Mm. Um, in fact, you might only, you might only be no more nor less than, than, uh, making more profound that which mums have known about little lads and little girls. Yes, well, time. aromatherapy if, comes if, from the Middle rub, Ages, really. If you really. rub the right place with the right <laughs> thing, you'll, you'll get a cure, or at least they'll stop crying. Twelve minutes passed, and let me remind you that Janice is with us. Three four three four three four. if you'd like to find out more about this fascinating topic of reflexology and aromatherapy. In the meantime, we'll hear John Denver in a medley of his greatest hit. John Denver, Annie's song. It's very nearly 16 minutes past 10. Uh, Janice Benham is with us. We're talking about reflo reflexology and aromatherapy. Got a couple of calls here from people who don't wish to go on the air. Well, that we understand too, of course, but somebody that has joined us from Arnold. Dorothy, good morning. Good morning. And your good question. Uh, well, I just wanted to say that last year I was in New Zealand and I had um, shingles. And I went to the general practitioner and he said to me, now I could cure you in three weeks with acupuncture. Well, I said, I'm touring and I just can't wait three weeks. So he said, well, would you like me to try reflexology to try and ease the pain which I had round the right eye? Mm -hmm. So I took off my shoe and he um, did a bit of pressurising uh, between my toes and the pain went within seconds. Now, I told my husband what to do and this every morning when I woke, I had this awful pain behind the eye and he did this little massage between the small toe and the next toe and the pain went for the whole day. Well, I was so impressed with this that when we got back to Arnold, I tried the library to get a book on reflexology, but um, none available. So I was wondering if your lady could help and tell me what book I could get on reflexology. Well, Dorothy, there's a book um, by Shirley Price on reflex on a, it's called Aromatherapy, but it's got quite a large amount on reflexology, yes. and that is um, oh dear. A book of practical aromatherapy yeah. is called, and yeah. it's by Shirley Price. Yeah. Now, um, the only thing I want to warn you about is do watch areas that you do press because you can cause an overstimulation of the area. Oh, I mean, the area yeah. where your husband's pressing, you're not near any um, major organs like the heart, mm -hmm. and the amount of stimulation he's probably given you is, is just enough. But if you say went and worked on the heart for a, um, a long period of time, you could you could bring on quite nasty side effects oh, and other areas. So yeah. just watch what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I did know notice in New Zealand that my sister actually did have um, sort of hands, a uh, prince of hands, telling you what nerves affected different parts of the body. But she hadn't got anything on feet. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know whether there is anything available, sort of diagrams to show you. Yes, well, there are diagrams in this book. Yes. Um, there is another book um, by Doreen Bailey, and mm. it's the Bailey book on um, reflexology. Yeah. Um, 
I'm trying to think where you could get it. You, you can get it from Mushroom in Nottingham. Uh -huh. And um, you'd have to ask in Susan and Parkers, I should imagine. Yeah. But there are there are a few there books in the market. Books available. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if perhaps New Zealand were ahead of us in uh, this type of... By the sound of it, Dorothy, it was a GP you went to. Yes, just an mm. ordinary general practitioner. Yeah. There are GPs actually in this country that um, do do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they... There's not many of them, obviously. You obviously struck lucky in New Zealand. Mm. Okay. You know, and I think the fact that I've taken dish springs and, and painkillers mm -hmm. and nothing helps, except this. Yes. Um, and, of course, the shingles then cleared up in about six weeks. But mm. uh, it was just the pain behind the eye that was so terrible. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. I thought I would just let your yes. listeners mm. know that That's it was a success for me. Very good of you. Right. And Thank the you names in question of the two books are Shirley Price's book on aromatherapy and reflexology and Doreen Bailey, the other. Uh, writer available at uh, you think health food shops and, and the like yes okay uh, question here what qualifications does someone with your aims in life have uh, Janice and, and well, how long is the training and, and where do you get it in fact well it's um at the moment there is no uh, no f no institute really that is um, that has certain people going to it there's a lot of uh, schools and courses going on at the moment being a new thing and everyone's jumping on the bandwagon um, but the ideal situation is is to either be a nurse or, or a physiotherapist or to have um, a qualification of a medical sort to be able to have your basic knowledge then to um, then to go on for further training and the training usually if you go to a good place it usually lasts about six months for reflexology and a little bit longer for aromatherapy mm -hmm. because they're both um, slightly different treatments um, and you need to if you want to do both you need to obviously learn but you can just do reflexology without aromatherapy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the, uh, likewise the other way around yeah, it's interesting you see over the, the 15 years or so I've been doing phonics mm. the way that the hypnotherapy has gone from the sort of condition you're in now yes. people beginning to accept it calls like Dorothy coming in of successes mm. uh, to what was it quite recently there mm. now is a national body to which Yes. Practitioners belong and are, are kicked out if they've proved to be less than perfect. Mm. Um, do you see that happening with your particular trade? Eventually, I think there will be some, eventually um, there will be working colleges and um, things, just like hypnotherapy, where you can have one or two, well, probably two or three years training all together mm -hmm. to get your basic quite, uh, to get your basic knowledge up. And do you think it's necessary that, that, that the practitioners of this art be trained medically as well. well I mean, you've yes. already worn twice, you see. Yes. Well, you see, um, if you can imagine it, the foot is like a map of the body. You've got to know where the organs lie in relation to the rest of the body. Obviously, you can learn a little bit of this from a book, but you do need people teaching you um, what to do and what not to do. I mean, when I first trained, um, even the people who were training me didn't know as much as I do and the others do now mm. because we're getting... If you're doing something full time, you learn more and more. Yes. So now really is the time to start getting something together, a big school together or, or institute together, to start passing on all this knowledge and warnings and so on. Does it, does it in any way offend you that you're still very much on the fringe of, of medical, normal medical practice? Not really, because I've got a lot of doctors behind me now. But I people mean, have to pay you for the service, don't they? Yes. It's never on the health service. Well, it won't be on the health service. I don't think they can really afford to to do that, to mm. be honest with you. But uh, there are doctors now who have recommended people to me. Obviously, they cannot say, go, a reflexologist would be good for you. But if somebody comes up and says, can I... Uh, can I find a reflexologist, please? And they know of somebody. They usually pass on mm. my name now. Mm. Somebody's phoned in to ask again anonymously, and I, and I appreciate why. Any treatment for neuralgia with, with your techniques? It depends, really. Yes, usually, because you're working directly on the nervous system anyway. Um, and neuralgia is a complaint of the nervous system. I don't know what it is, actually. Basically, yes, yeah. Um, yes, it, you could have quite a profound effect. If the... If the person responded in one treatment, and you would know whether they responded in one treatment or not, they'd usually have either an immediate lessening of the pain, or they would have, um, or they would get a worsening of the pain straight away. If they had something like that happening in the first treatment, then yes, it can be treated. 
Mm -hmm. But obviously a treatment would have to be tried to do, but usually in, your, in cases of neuralgia there's no problem. Maybe one or two people um, listening, uh, Jan, who will remember the occasion that I was telling you while the gramophone I was on about mm. a year, year and a half ago, when an American came over with, with numerous books of plans of the foot and where to do this. Yes. Things. And he, he suggested if you've got a pain in the knee, which I happen to have most of the time through rheumatism, he said if I press there just next to my thumbnail mm. and massaged it, I would first of all have an increase in temperature and I'd feel flushed, which sure worked, and then mm. the pain in my knee would gradually disappear. And sure it did, but I, I wonder how much that was suggestion. Well, I've done things where they haven't been suggested. Um, I've, d I've done little tests on myself with other people, with clients, obviously, and I've I've done things on their on their feet that they don't know that I'm doing, and the next day they've come down with other things, um, with responses to what I was doing, and they did not mm. know about it. Mm. But they have come down with it. They they have responded without surely knowing the, about surely it. Surely the, the great smile on everybody's face is that we're not taking drugs for it. No. And 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 we are being educated away from that, aren't we? Yes. Uh, the problem is. If people are taking a lot of drugs, they cannot. Uh, it's not really advisable to have reflexology, or too much of it, because mm. obviously, reflexology causes and it causes basically the body to start its own healing process. And, and that's affected by the drugs. Of course, yes, yes, and you know the drugs. Um, if somebody takes a lot of Valium. A lot of that stored extra excess is stored in the liver, and again, this is congestion of the liver. And if I do reflexology on that liver it immediately causes a lot of the Valium to be come released, out of yes. the release. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, let's take a call. Jan, you're with us from Woodford. Good morning. Ah, good morning, Graham. Yes, um, I remember hearing Janice about a year ago, wasn't she? Well, she says six months, but I wasn't on the wireless <laughs> that day. So, <laughs> yes, carry on. And uh, I believe she mm, did some treatment on one of the cricket teams, is that right? Was it yes, Kai yes, that's right. What, what's happened? Well, he came to me with um, a problem with his, in his middle back, middle of his back. And he'd had physiotherapy on the back, and he'd had acupuncture, and it wasn't really helping, and he couldn't bowl. <coughs> and anyway, I did some reflexology, and found it wasn't actually the middle of his back that was caused. Wait a minute, got it the wrong way round here again. It was his neck that he had the trouble with, and I found that the problem wasn't in his neck; it was in the middle of his back. Yeah. And the acupuncturist hadn't fi figured this out, or, or nor the physiotherapist. They just were looking at the neck. And they knew something was wrong, but they couldn't do anything about it. And I worked on the middle of the back, and I told the physiotherapist where to work on the back, and there, when he found the part, he realised that that mm. could have been causing it. And between the two of us, he was able to get himself bowling again. And I think he's still bowling. Mm. Well, this is the reason, mm, I, I think I remember something about you saying that. Well, my mm. husband had, um, from time to time, he gets trouble at the back of his neck, at the top of his spine, and also at the very bottom of his spine. Yes. And I wondered if reflexology could um, benefit him. Depends on the problem, really. Um, if it's a slight case of um, arthritis, very slight case, where it's just a bit of inflammation around the area, yes. Um, but if there's a lot of joints out or anything like that, um, really, you need, you need to go to an osteopath or physiotherapist. I don't think it's anything really serious. No. Um, the, th the lower back, you see, um, usually it could either be coming from the very bottom of the back or the top of the spine, usually in those two cases, because there's always one response to the other. <coughs> but uh, uh, reflexology could probably help there, yes. Yeah. Have you got um, uh, a clinic somewhere in Nottingham? Well, um, I'll, I'll give some numbers to the uh, Radio Nottingham and uh, they'll pass them on for you, yeah. for different people. And there's something else, you might think it's a silly statement, but I remember thinking this after you were on last time. Mm-hmm. You know when you have, some people have ill-fitting shoes, don't they? Mm -hmm. Which yeah. can cause, it can sort of give you friction on the ball of your foot or something like that. Yeah. Can ill-fitting shoes worn over a period of time, can that be um, affecting other organs in the body? Well, if you have ill-fitting shoes anyway, you're going to be causing posture, postural problems, which are going to be affecting your organs anyway. Yeah. Um, there have been a case when somebody's had an ingrown toenail and it's caused a headache. Uh, continually, and once the ingrown toenail has been removed, um, the headaches disappear because the the big toe, it was on the big toe, this ingrown toenail, um, is, is basically the top of the head. But um, it's going to cause problems anyway, with obviously with postural yeah. problems. You know the ball of the foot and the yeah. nerve endings in that area? Yes. W which um, organ does it respond to? The ball of the foot. 
usually around the lungs er lung areas. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jan, thank you. Uh, let me remind everyone, 343434 is the number. Janice Benham with us for a further quarter of an hour. While you do the calling, we'll listen to the Metropole Orchestra. <laughs> Metropole Orchestra, but not for me. 29 minutes to Edith, you're with us from Heysen. Green, good morning. Yes, hello, Graham. And what help can we be to you? Yes, I'd like to talk to your reflexologist from... Uh, Aromatherapist, yes. Yes. Um, uh, why I'm asking this, um, I wondered if it worked in reverse. If you get pains in your feet, you could sort of detect where the trouble is, because years ago, my sister went to... Um, uh, chiropodist and she had a lump on the back of her heel and he said the problem was in her head and it was at the back of the neck. Now I get a pain in my foot from time to time, not all the time, and I wondered if that sort of would uh, dictate where I was having a problem. Not, not always, because no. you can get arthritis in the feet and all sorts of things like that which are not really, well they are related to the body but not in the same way as reflexology. Um, I know of people when they're, nerve, when they're um, having reflexology, they suddenly they can start to feel uh, responses in the feet to the rest of the body. It doesn't. It does happen, but it's only very occasionally. This is almost tied to Jan's second point about shoes acting as yes. a kind of permanent. Yeah, you've got to watch it really, because I mean, as I said, if you if you've got a little bit of inflammation in your feet, it doesn't always follow that you've got problems with your lungs. No, no, I can understand that, but mm. I just wondered if one did, you know, if it was sort of a reversal thing. Well, you can, can get happen, it. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. can happen. Yeah. Okay, did anything else? No, that was. Okay, all love, thank you. Right. We're off to Clifton. Ernest, good morning. Uh, good morning. Hey, I'd like to speak to a lady. Uh, I was interested in this uh, first call about the shingles. Oh, yes, Dorothy, who had had it in New Zealand. Yes. Yeah, well... Are you, are you suffering from shingles at the yeah, moment? Well, I've had it since September. Oh, you poor thing. And I've had it all along my trunk, all along the side, and all down my back. Yes. And um, I'm getting continual pain. The painkillers don't seem to affect me now. Mm-hmm. Don't seem to uh, do anything for me. Is there anything that can be done? Well, yes, um... Usually acupunctural reflexology can help. Um, you know, um, basically we wouldn't know until we did a treatment. I mean, what works on one person doesn't always work. It works quite a, um, probably 75% on people. But um, 
it, it would have to do it. You'd have to have a treatment done to see, and you'd know in the first treatment if there could be anything done or not. And and Ernest would have to go to his GP, who would have to refer. Him. Well, the doctor. There is now acupuncturists in the um, hospitals, and the doctors sometimes will refer them to these acupuncturists in the hospitals as well, and that could be done. That's on the health service. And that's on the health service. The only thing is, though, they're not what I call highly trained acupuncturists. They're still experimenting themselves. But um, I don't think they'll do any harm to you. And that's through the GP. And that's through the yes. GP, yes. Um, there are various things you can do for shingles. But uh, the only way we'd know how, if we could do anything, is, as I say, really giving a treatment as such. Okay, let's try try a doctor. See if your doctor is in favour of that kind of treatment mm. in your condition, because it still has to be a medical decision, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, that call from Clifton. We're off to the meadows, coming slightly closer to our studios. Beatrice, good morning. Good morning. And I'd like to speak to the lady. Yes, the lady, please. she's all ears. Yes. yes. Um, right. Well, I've got two. I get quite a lot of pain in my legs. Now, I did, when I went to the doctor, mm -hmm. he sent me to the hospital to have an X-ray, mm -hmm. and they said there was a slight bit of arthritis at the bottom of my back. And yes. that's where I was getting the pain from. Yeah. I was wondering if that could, uh, your treatment could do anything. If there's not too much damage done with the arthritis. And they said there was only a slight bit. Yes, usually then there can be. Um, oh. it, but it depends on, I mean, what I think of as bad and what the doctor would think of as bad. I see. But that's obviously where the pain would be coming from, yes. Mm -hmm. It depends on how, how, much, um, how much inflammation is around the area and how much... Um, yes you know, how much damage is actually done. If there's no damage actually done, yes. then usually you can get rid of it in one or two treatments very quickly. Oh, so. and where, would it, where do I have to go for the treatment? Can well, you? there are now reflexologists around Nottingham and uh -huh. Leicester, and um, what I'll have to do is, is give a phone number to, to the Radio Nottingham. We'll, we'll call you with a number you. afterwards, OK? Yes, OK. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Leslie, you're with us from Kirkby. Good morning. Good morning. And your point. Um, in November... I have my urethra taken out. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since, I've had pains, you know, at both ends of the urethra. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this uh, sort of treatment would affect me. It wouldn't really be very helpful because once you've had an operation and had something removed, you have really broken up the nervous system around that area. The telephone exchange is out of order. Really yes, basically. Nerves, yes. I, it might be. But, uh, there have been cases when people who've had operations uh, have been helped by reflexology, but I don't like to usually treat them then because it's usually a, a waste of time. I see. And the, the surgeon told me that they, they thought that it was the cause of the pain was the uh, loose ends of nerves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, jangling about. Affected yes. by the, the scar tissue of previous yes. Yes. Yeah, there's not really a lot the reflex. I mean, it might be able to, you never know, but mm -hmm. I, wouldn't, um, I, wouldn't, I couldn't promise you anything on that, I'm afraid. I think. Okay, Leslie. Okay. Right, thank thank you. you. Uh, we're off to Bestwood Park now. Irene, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. I would like to ask that um, over a period of time, my arm's gone dead in bed, you know, mm -hmm. and I eventually went to the doctor. He gave me a course of vitamin B, but he eventually sent me for x-rays, and they told me I've got like a, a spinal movement of arthritis in the spine. Mm -hmm. And then that, uh, I went for treatment, and it seemed all right. And then suddenly it's come in my arm, and this has just happened. And of course, I saw um, the Rex. Well, I'm sorry, I can't just say the word. And uh, they they gave us a lecture, mm. and uh, they said that they could work on the feet, and it opened the channel to bring all these diseases through the channel and out. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if, if in my case, this would, you know, help. You've uh, seen a film on reflexology, and and yeah. you wonder, as you know, having seen that. Yes, um, it depends really on how bad the, the arthritis is. Uh, you could probably ease it quite a bit with yeah. reflexology yeah. and acupuncture again yeah. and massage. But yeah. um, it depends really on how bad and how far gone it is really. I don't think it's far gone at the moment. No. Um, you could certainly probably improve on the condition. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay yeah. then, Irene. Yes. Yeah. Uh, also, could I ask? Uh, he did say this uh, gentleman that also with anybody with diabetics yeah. uh, they could work on the feet and it would open through the channel and out. But is this correct as well? Yes, um, I've had a good response with, diabe with oh. diabetics. Well, what, you stimulate the, the pancreas to make, yes. make its own insulin? Yes, and I've had people come off chloropopamide that used to have, to have tablets as well. I haven't gone so far as um, people with insulin problem, you know, people that actually need to be injected with insulin. 
but uh, certainly on a, a small level of diabetes uh, you can certainly improve on the condition quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay Aaron, thanks very much. Um, this caller asks uh, anonymously, anything for loss of taste and smell? Um, hmm. Unlikely. Okay. It's unlikely. Uh, can migraine be treated? And this is one of dozens of us. Yes, that. yes, because you can find out why the migraine, migraine is um, occurring, whether it's through dietary or through tension. And that's one thing that the reflexology can diagnose straight away, and then you can go about treating it then. Mm. This listener clearly has a number of uh, grave problems, deep depression, panic, which we've all experienced, I think. Yes. Uh, leaking heart valve, a physical, and a back and leg problem, both physical things. Mm. Um, do you think the three for a start are linked? Could well be, because if the system is uh, a bit sluggish, and the lymphatic system is sluggish as well, it can cause depression quite a large amount. Mm. Uh, when I've, I've treated people with depression sometimes, we've had to get rid of the physical problem before we've got rid of the depression. Mm. And it's, we've certainly done that if we've got rid of the physical problem. What about this um, thing that many people experience, uh, from, from, my, from my having listened to them on this programme? They're in the supermarket, uh, pushing the trolley, and suddenly they get this overburning desire to get the hell out of there. They feel sweaty, clammy, horrible, hate the place, must get out. Mm. Uh, what, I, I shall tell you in a minute what our hypnotherapist has said, but what do you say? Well, I say it's, um, there's usually a lack of air conditioning in the area, or claustrophobia of some... I mean, sorry, there's the air conditioning in that area. I know a lot of people who get it in um, places, say, like the Victoria Centre, and they've got to get out of there. Um, it could be claustrophobia, but my way of thinking, it's a uh, lack of, you know, sometimes it can be too hot in these places, or they're having to, they could be, it could be number of numerous reasons, or they could be frightened of actually the condition mm. of going through it. It depends mm. on the person itself. Well, the reason I asked this question yes. was that the hypnotherapist said that she had found, and she doesn't know why, yeah. perhaps you know why, that if you stand still and, and screw your toes up and grip the ground and actually relate back to the fact that you're standing up. Yeah. But sometimes that helps. It sometimes just makes you think, calm down. Yes, well, that's the same way. Now, as, as that is almost reflexology <laughs> of yourself, isn't it? Yeah, well, um, I think what it is very similar to would be actually taking deep breaths and just relax, trying to relax, calm yourself down and relax. But I find a lot of these places are very overheated and most people mm. tend to go in with thick coats yes, on. Outside, and I honestly think that is a lot of the problem. And of course, if you're standing for a long time in the queues, like at, say, Aldi, you know, you're standing in, at the cheese counter. Well, don't for a accuse long time. them of having longer queues than any no. other supermarket. <laughs> Just the, the one I go to. <laughs> and, you know, you're standing in queues for long periods of time. You, you, you're getting hotter and hotter because you've got your thick coats on and so forth. And it, uh, most people I know at work at these places say that they, um, they get pro lots of sinus problems and things. Yes, yes. Which, well, I, which yeah, can cause sure. all these problems, you see, and you want yes. to get out then because it's too yeah. close and... Yes. Well, it's 18 minutes to. Mary, you're with us from Mullerton. Good morning. Uh, good morning. And your point? It's about a pain I have in my big toe. Mm -hmm. um, now, I've had it for a number of years, and I've been to osteopaths. Now, the last time I went to the osteopath, he sort of pulled the big toe and the toe next to it, sort of pulled them back and forward, and it did ease it a little bit. He said there was a, a lot of information and a trapped nerve. Mm -hmm. Now that did help it for a little bit. Sometimes it's not there at all, and other times I'm up at two and three and four in the morning walking the floor with it, and mm. during the day it's what are, your feet, what are your shoes like now? My shoes are just the normal shoes I've been wearing. I don't wear a high heel now, I'm just a flat shoe, and uh, they're usually a sort of sporty type. Mm -hmm. And um, they never seem to bother me that way. But, and they're always good shoes, they're never ever cheap shoes. Mm. But uh, the toe really, it really gets that I could cry at times with mm -hmm. pain in it. Yes. And yes. He says, I'll tell you what it feels like. It feels as if if you've ever had a, uh, a hole in your stock, sock and your toe has pushed through and it feels as if that tight band is round the toe, you know, from where your mm -hmm. toe was pushed mm -hmm. through yes. your sock. Yes. Well, what do you make of this? Tell us. It sounds to me like a trap nerve because it's the most painful thing out. Yeah, um, well, it is really. Yes. I, I, I it thought it was like a trap nerve, you know. Yeah. It could, it could be caused either by... Um, it sounds to me like uh, definitely a mechanical problem uh -huh. and really the only thing that would help, I mean if it's arthritis there that's causing this um, catching of the nerve perhaps, yeah, it could uh -huh. be that, then obviously something like reflexology or massage on it would help, yeah. which is what you know the osteopath would have helped. Yeah. But if it's actually a mechanical problem where something is 
mechanically pressing on the area, then you know there's not really a lot you can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any way I can get in touch with the young lady? In, in we'll phone you, Mary. Will you? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot. You, thank you. That's the end of our program, Janice. Many thanks uh, for joining us this uh, Friday morning, bringing a fitting end to the week. Janice Benham talking this morning on reflexology and aromatherapy.